we're not even 24 hours removed from the story of Donald Trump releasing classified information to Ambassador Kislyak, Russian Ambassador Kislyak, and Russian Foreign Minister uh, Lavrov. Um, not even 24 hours removed from that breaking news. This afternoon at 5 o'clock, the New York Times broke the story uh, that Donald Trump himself was involved in trying to suppress uh, the investigation into Michael Flynn. This is according to a memo uh, that was recounted to the New York Times. There's a memo that um, the FBI, former FBI Director James Comey, uh, wrote in regards to a phone conversation that he had with Donald Trump. Comey, according to this newsletter, uh, to, to this article, Comey has a habit of uh, recording memos after every conversation, specifically conversations that he feels um, should be documented for, to protect himself. And in this conversation, um, Donald Trump allegedly requested that he make this investigation with Michael Flynn go away. Now, I want to share the chain of information on this because it's, it's only fair to do this um, because I actually feel uncomfortable with some of the chain. Um, this is how it went in a phone conversation with Donald Trump. Um, uh, FBI, former FBI director James Comey writes a memo that records Donald Trump's requesting that this information be uh, or the investigation into Michael Flynn disappears. This memo is included in a set of memos and all the documentation that Michael, uh, that James Comey left at the FBI. Uh, a current official got a hold of the memo and released the information to the New York Times. No one at the New York Times actually saw the memo themselves. They're actually just recanting or recounting rather a story that was given to them from an FBI official. This chain of information is important to me because it really, it matters. It matters where our anonymous sources get their information. And in a lot of ways, this story really is hearsay. However, it sounds 100% plausible that Donald Trump, not understanding the ramifications of his actions, would get on the phone with the FBI director and request that the investigation into James into Michael Flynn go away because Michael Flynn is a good guy. According to the New York Times, this is breaking news, according to the New York Times, Jason Chaffetz of the House, uh, uh, the House Intelligence Committee has demanded that all the records of any discussions between Trump and Comey, as well as coming, Comey's memos, be released to the House Intelligence Committee. This is where we are just 24 hours after, 24 hours after we find out that uh, President Trump released information to the Russians. When are we going to get a break? We'll talk about that in a second. We won't get a break, but no. what's, what's, what's your first take of this? Uh, as you say, right, it's all, it's hearsay. We don't have the... And the, let me correct myself. It's yeah. Jason Chaffetz, Chaffetz of the House Oversight Committee, right. not the Intelligence Committee. I want to correct myself. Right, Go ahead. Right. Uh, so, I mean, look, uh, it is entirely plausible, right? We, we've had sort of the rotating set of, of reasons why Comey, Comey was fired, right? Mm -hmm. And this goes back to what we're talking about with surrogate, surrogates, just kind mm -hmm. of... Twisting, yeah. just twisting through it, right? Burning them off, right? Giving them, giving them something, and then he, he doubles back on it. I mean, is this what, it, what, what is that? What it means to be a showboat to, to Donald Trump is to not take, uh, not take his demand. Mm. Uh, you know, this is one of the the explanations that he gave. Um, it, it seems so plausible for for I, 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 have, I have a lot of critiques of Comey. Mm -hmm. I, I think that he did not uh, handle himself in in a, in a, in a very. Uh, uh, intelligent fashion over the course of yeah. the election. That said, dishonesty is not uh, one of the things that I would ascribe to him. Right. Uh, you know, sort of a uh, kind of self-righteousness, uh, yeah. a, a lack of long-term oh, judgment. Uh, oh, uh, 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 an inflated uh, self of importance. Yeah, yeah, all those of self -importance, things. Yeah. yeah, absolutely right, right. This sort of uh, institutionalism, which is mm -hmm. kind of, but all none of those things uh, suggest dishonesty. Mm -hmm. None of them suggest somebody who uh, is going to, to tear down an institution on his way out. Uh, you know, we don't know, obviously, but I don't see any reason at the surface to, I mean, it passes the sniff test, right? It absolutely it, does. It's, it, it, put it this way, if you were writing a play about this, and the Trump character said that, and the Comey character no said one that, would be you'd be like, oh, that, that's, that's good dialogue, right? Like, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, it doesn't mean it's true, but... Uh, well, it, it, so here's it, the thing. It helps us. So this is the thing that um, um, our producer Max actually pointed out. If you want to get to the bottom of it, if you want to actually flesh, flesh this out, um, doing exactly what this official did with the New York Times will do that. Right. As we can see with Jason Chapis is now demanding all of the documentation, all the memos. He's, he's demanding this because now we, we actually up in the ante. 
So what he did with the Russians, and, and I hate that phrase, I don't mean the Russians in a derogatory sense, I mean the, the Russians in a descriptive sense, they were Russians. What he did with the <laughs> Russians um, is not illegal because he's the president and he can do that. But now yeah. he's actually obstructing justice in this, in this fashion. Now, now we have to ask the question is, is there any legal uh, cover that the president would have for this? And even beyond that, would this, would any other president survive this? I mean, uh, in terms of legal cover, I'm not, not going to pretend I know all, all the ways in which that could un, uh, unravel. Um, it, one, one suspects that whatever he said, you could argue, oh, I meant it this way. I meant right. it that. There's always cover, right? Unless, uh, unless he directly told him to do something. I'm sure he's like technically covered. I, the, the amazing thing is is that the Republicans continue to you know sort of stand there and stand by and uh, it it does seem like you know I mean th this has nothing to do with the resistance right yeah. it's the day that they realize that you know Mike Pence would be a lot better for a lot of these things we're trying to do and that's when we all that, that we have to ask if that's what we're, you know if, <laughs> do we, we really want do that? we want that <laughs> right but you know that that's you know can he survive this the way the way our our system works yeah he can survive it as long as his the party him. wants him there. Yeah, and uh, I, I, it's confounding to me that they want him there, and it might right. might be just that there's like a uh, an internal ticking clock on the Republican side that says, yeah, if it's less than eighteen months, it looks really bad, but the minute that it's sort of you mm -hmm. know it feels like it's been long enough, I think it's we'll more of a, a poll rate. I think if it's if he's, um, he's bad, though. His, his numbers it's are bad. bad. It's bad. Like forty eight percent now uh, approve of impeaching him. Yeah. Uh, forty one percent disapprove of it. Eleven percent are undecided. Uh, so you know we have forty eight percent of the general public who uh, believe that the president should be impeached is pretty bad. But apparently we're not at that threshold yet. We're apparently we're not at the threshold where the Republican Party will say enough is enough. But you bring up a you bring up a point here. You bring up a point here that I think is worth discussing. Um, and. Do we want Donald Trump uh, to be impeached? Right. 